Hello everyone, welcome to our lesson on solving exponential equations. So just some review from grade 11. This was the compound interest formula you learned last year and this is what all of the variables or parameters represented. Interest was a little, had a little step to it. Your I value is whatever your rate is, say it was 8%, that would be 0 0.08 divided by compounding period. If your money is being compounded quarterly, you would divide by four. N is the number of compounding periods, and that is found by taking the number of years. So if your money is in the bank for 10 years and you're getting quarterly compounding, that means 10 times four, N would be a 40 in that case. That's review from grade 11. Also, half-life is review from grade 11. That's the time that it takes a sample of radioactive element, radioactive element to decay. And this is the formula that we use for half-life. So the base is one half because we want the material to have. And the T stands for the mass at whatever time. H is the element's half-life. So T and H, so T and H must be in the same unit. So if we're talking about days or years or whatever, they both have to be in the same unit. So that's review of just some stuff from grade 11. The, these formulae are based on the standard exponential equations. So this is the main one we used last year. And yes, form, the plural of formula can be formulas or formulae, um, where A is the initial amount. So this A value stands for your starting value. Y is the final amount and B is the base, which is the growth or the decay factor. And we can use this formula for almost everything we're doing in today's uh, lesson. If the question involves percentages, remember that B, your base, is going to be 1 plus the rate. Now that if the percent is 18%, um, then that would be 0.18. 1 plus 0.18. If it's increasing, if it's decreasing, it's 1 minus 0 0.18. Uh, and B, if it's doubling, that means 1 plus 1 uh, plus that's a 2 and so on. If you're not given an init initial amount, usually you're assuming you have 100% of whatever your, you, whatever your, um, whether it's, say it's talking about light, then you have 100% light and then it, the light dims or gets brighter. Or if you're talking about a, an amount of money and you're not told how much to start with, well then you've got 100% of your money to start with. So that would be the same as a 1. Example 1. The power source used by satellites is called radioisotope. Fully charged, a satellite has 50 watts of power, but the power source loses its charge really slowly. That's not even 4%, that's 0.4% per year. That's how it loses its power. It, it has solar panels, of course, that collect most of the power that it's needed. Determine an equation to model this situation. Remember that our base is one minus rate because we have a percentage question here. So let's start with that formula that we just looked at, y equals a times b to the power of x, b to the power of x. You could also, instead of a y, you could have f at x here. So what can we sub in? Well, let's look at the question first. And we're going to change our variables to match. Let's use, instead of a Y, let's use P for, because we're talking about power. Um, so I could put P for power, and instead of X, I mean, because we're talking about time, that's our independent variable, we'll put a T here, is equal to. So A stands for the initial value. What's the initial value? Here's what it is. Oops, 50. 50. And what's our base? Our base is one minus the rate. So that's over here. Our B value is going to be one minus, don't put 0 0.4 here because that was 0.4%. It's really 0. Point, now we have to divide by 100, 0 0.004. So our B is going to be 0 0.996. We'll put that over here, 0 0.996, and the exponent is a t. It's very tempting, I know, to want to multiply these two numbers together, but the order of operations says that I can't, 
I can't do multiplication until I take care of the exponent. So I have to be able to calculate this first before I can multiply. So don't mess up that basic elementary mathematical principle of bed mass. So that's, all, that's as far as we can go with our equation. We cannot simplify it any further, and that's all the question asks for. Part B says, if the equipment in the satellite needs at least 15 watts of power to function, for how long can the satellite operate before it needs recharging? So it needs 15 watts of power to function, and it starts with 50 watts. Where do you think the 15 is going to go in this equation? Well, that's going to be our P at T. That's going to be our Y value. 15 is going here. That's the power at some time. We don't know what time. That's what we're going to. That's what we're figuring out is for how long. So P at T is equal to 50 times 0 0.996 to the power of T. Well, we can divide both sides by 50. Divide both sides by 50. That gives us 0 0.3 equals 0 0.996 to the power of t. So what could we possibly do here? We have to solve for t and um, the t is in the exponent. Oh my goodness. Can we divide both sides by 0 0.996? No way. Don't even think that. That just, that doesn't even, it's not even possible. Even if it were possible, we just leave a t sitting up here. It's still an exponent. It's an exponent. We need to get it out of being an exponent. So uh, the strategy we're going to use here, so we can't say, oh, divide both sides by 0 0.99. We can't do that. What we're going to do to start off is, and I'm going to show you a different strategy later, but what we're going to do to start off is we're going to say, take, you know how you can add 12 to both sides, multiply both sides by 81. What we're going to do is we're going to take log both base 10 of both sides. Let me write that down. We're going to take log base 10 of both sides. Why base 10 of both sides? Why base 10? Base 10 because my calculator works with base 10. I could take log base 32 of both sides, but, but I don't have a calculator that will do that. So really what I'm doing here is I'm going to, it's like I'm, it's just like I'm saying multiply both sides by three, except what I'm doing is I'm putting a log base 10 in front of both sides here, log base 10 of both sides. So what we have now is the ability to use that amazing power of a power, our power log rule. That's the one that allows me to take this exponent and bring it down. So let me write the left side out. The left side is, I'm just gonna leave that alone, log base 10 of 0 0.3, that's equal to t times log base 10 of 0 0.996. So we're, we're bringing that down. And the reason that we're doing that is we are trying to isolate t. Remember, that's the whole point of using logs is to be able to get at that exponent and work with it. Now I have t that looks like you know, it's a whole number or an integer. It's going to be a real number anyway at the front. So I want to isolate it. I'm going to divide both sides by what? I'm trying to isolate t. I'm going to divide both sides by log base 10 of 0 0.996. Both sides. Log base 10 of 0 0.996. These two cancel out. I have a nice t here now isolated. And since I have a log base 10, I can get out my calculator. So you need to do that right now. I want you to get your calculator out and calculate log base 10 of 0 0.3 over log base 10 of 0.996. And you should get this approximately, so I'm gonna put a dot over my equal sign here. This is approximately 300. Let's do, doesn't say the number of decimal places, 0.39. Approximately, that's what T is. So what we have just done here to get this answer, now I'm going to do a sentence in a second, but I want to point out what, we talked about this a long time ago, I didn't explain it at the time, the change of base formula here. That's what this is up here in the box. It's a change of base formula. And we need that when we don't have a base of 10 because our calculators only work with a base of 10. So in this question, we had originally, um, a 
log, whoops, let me write it down over here. In this question, we introduced our own base with a log of 10, remember? We used a log of 10, 10, 10 here. So we didn't, we could revert that back to a base without a 10, but that's how we go from a base that is not a 10 to a base that is a 10. You're gonna see a better example later, but I put my, I put this box here on this screen. I probably should have put it on another screen. Change the base formula is what is needed when we don't have a base of 10. We actually did use a base of 10. I, I probably should have done a different one here. I should have done a base seven or something just to show you how it, how it blends in with this here, but we'll do another example in a minute. Let me erase that. Oops, okay. So my sentence, back to my sentence. Therefore, what does that number mean? What's going on here? What is this 300 number? Look at the question. What does T represent? T represents time and how much time? In years, 300 years. So in theory, this satellite could run for 300 years without uh, needing recharging. I mean, it's without needing to replace the battery or needing a new, needing to, and it's not, it's turned into space junk anyway, right? They just let it float away. But that is a long time because of the solar panels. The re, and we have 300.39, so we don't call that 301 years because it wouldn't, it wouldn't last 301 years, okay? It would only last 300 years. So I'm gonna write a sentence. Therefore, the satellite can potentially operate for about 300 years. Next question. Example two, solve the following equations without using logs. That's great, because a lot of us still don't really like logs, so we don't have to use logs. We need the bases to match always when we do these types of questions. So when I first look at this, I got a radical, I wanna get rid of that. So instead of a radical, I'm gonna write 100, one over 625, but I'm gonna write it with an exponent of one half. My left side is good, five to the power of two X, and my right side, I'm gonna change that to one over 625 to the power of one half. Now, if you remember what I told you before is it's better to get rid of those fractions and just make them integers if we can. So instead of one over 625, I'm gonna write that as 625 to the power of negative one. That's the same as one over 625. Now we have a power of a power law right here. We multiply these two together. We have five to the power of two X equals 625 to the power of negative one half. Now I have integers on both sides. I want to look at a common base. You always go with the smaller number. So five is the smaller number. Five to the power of two X equals, how can I write 625 with a base of five? So that's one you should know. And if you don't know, you can get out your calculator, five to the power of two, five to the power of three. Five to the power of four, yes, five to the power of four is 625. So simplifying a little further, I get five to the power of two X equals five to the power of, multiplying these two together, that's the power of a power law, four times negative one half is negative two. Now that my bases match, I can ignore them. Remember, you're not just, you're not saying, oh, I'm dividing both sides by five. That's not what's happening. I'm just gonna look at the exponents now because the base is matched, so now it's easy for me to make the exponents match. Now I can say, um, let me move it up here. Now I can say, therefore, 2x, that's one exponent, must equal negative two, because my base is matched. Divide both sides by two, x equals negative one. And you could try that out right here. Sub in a negative one, five to the power, that would give me five to the power of, five to the power of negative two, is that the same as the square root of one, uh, square root of one over 625? Yeah, because the square root of one over 625 is also one over 25, right? The square root of one is one, the square root of 625 is 25. So that would be another way to do that question. You could have jumped right to this step right at the beginning and then found a common base, you would have got the same answer. So I didn't, I left it a little more complicated, but certainly you could have reduced that right away to one over 25 and then that might have been a little easier for you to do. Next question, take a look at this one. 
So what we're tempted to do is say, oh, those, those have a common base, the one fourth base, but no, this is not multiplying, not multiplying, it's addition, it's not multiplication. So I can't write one fourth as a common base and then x plus one times x, I can't do that because you have to be multiplying your bases in order to do that step. So that idea is out. So do you have any other ideas? What else could we do here? Well, this is kind of a new type of question where we don't have, we can't just go straight to our power laws from grade 10. What I'm going to do here, here's a new strategy for it. I'm going to take this exponent of x plus 1 and I'm going to break it up. So let me just back that up for you a bit. Let's say I had, let's make it easier here. I had two to the power of six. Well, the step above that could have been two to the power of three. Let's make that a four. Two to the power of four times two to the power of two. All right, that would give me two to the power of four plus two. That would give me two to the power of six. So the, this 4 plus 2 up here is the important part that I'm looking at. This 4 plus 2, that's the same as what I put in a green box over at the 1 fourth exponent. So I'm going to break up the 1 fourth. I'm going to back it up so that it looks like this. I want to take it a step backwards. A step backwards would be 1 fourth. So don't put an equal sign here. I already have one equal sign. And only put one equal sign in each line, never two just one. So this is one fourth to the power of x, right? And that's times one fourth to the power of one. So this is the same as, look at our, our bases match and we're multiplying, that's the same as one fourth power of x plus one. That's back to here. So I, I kind of reverted, I reverse engineered this, this line here. To, and you'll see why this is a good strategy. And then I've got my plus sign here in the middle. And then my other piece, I'm not doing anything with that. That's just one fourth to the X. I'll leave that alone. And there's my 20. So what I did was I broke up, I broke up the exponent as a product. That was my new step there. Great way to do these questions. So it still looks kind of confusing, but the next, the reason I did this is because this is one piece. This is another piece and they're separate. Anytime you have a plus or a minus sign that separates a monomial into a binomial. So I have two pieces here. They actually have a common factor. Maybe it's hard to see, but it's true. There's a common factor here and the common factor, the greatest common factor here is one fourth to the power of x because both of those blue bracketed sections that I illustrated there, they both have that piece to it. So I'm going to put that in the front. I'll put it in blue. This is my common factor, one fourth to the power of x. Now when I take that out, so I have to take it out of both parts. Okay, when I take it out of the first part, and I take it out of this piece right here, I divide it out, that's how we factor. When I divide out one fourth to the power of x, I'm left with the other one fourth. I'm left with this one fourth, which is just to the power of one. And that's kind of an invisible one. I don't have to write a power of one. When I divide it out of the second bracket, one fourth to the power of x divided by one fourth to the power of x is one. So this is looking better. Let me clean it up a bit. I've got my greatest common factor. Now in this bracket, I've just got one fourth plus one. What's a quarter plus one? A quarter plus one is one and a quarter or five quarters. I'll write it as an improper fraction. Five over four, that's equal to 20. Now I can divide both sides, divide both sides by five over four to get rid of that five over four. Remember how to divide fractions. I'm taking 20 I'm dividing by 5 over 4. That's the same as 20 times 4 over 5. And this 20 is over an invisible 1. So 20 
times, so multiply straight across the top. 20 times 4 is 80 over 5, and that reduces to 16. So back to my question. These two are gone. I have 1 fourth to the power of x equals 16. So that's looking a lot like the question we just did over here. Now we're going to go back to the to the uh, common base. Uh, I'm going to erase all of this here. So um, press pause if you need to, but I'm just going to erase all of that. And then we'll finish the question on the side. OK, moving it up here. I'm going to first of all get rid of that fraction. Instead of 1 fourth, I'm going to write 4 as negative, the power of negative 1 equals 16. So I have 4 to the power of negative x equals 16. And of course, we want to write with a common base. The common base is always lower. So I pick the 4, not the 16. So 4 to the negative x equals 4 squared. Negative x, therefore, equals 2. We're ignoring the bases, ignoring the bases. That means negative x equals 2 or x equals 2. And the great thing about algebra, whoops, negative 2. The great thing about algebra is you can always check your work by subbing into the original question. The next example, um, we're going to use logs. This one we're not supposed to use logs. And they worked out well because everything could be written with the same base. 1 fourth 16, 6, 25, 5. These ones aren't like that. Look at these bases, 5 and 30. I won't be able to do that. We're going to solve for x. And they can be solved multiple ways. And I'll, I'll try. I'll show you uh, one alternative for b. I'll do it two different ways for you. Well, first of all, I know I can't just write 30 with a base of 5. So i got to forget that strategy. But if you remember the other strategy I showed you, we're going to take log base 10 of both sides. Log base 10 of both sides. So I'll just rewrite the question. But I'm going to put a log base 10. I'm not even going to write the 10 because it's always a base 10 if you don't have anything written there. So I'm not putting the 10 because the 10 is assumed if there's nothing there. Whoops, but that should be a 5. Okay, so I've got log 5, 2x plus 3 equals log base 10, but I'm not going to put the 10, 30. Well, that's taking log base 10 of both sides. Now I'm going to use the power law to bring this down. I'm going to put it in the front. This is 2x plus 3. This is that fantastic law. I love this law. It makes life so much easier. Log 30. Okay, now what? Well, we're trying to isolate x. That's the whole goal here. So I'm going to divide both sides. I'm going to divide both sides by log of 5 log of 5. These will cancel. And on my left, now I'm left with 2x plus 3 equals log 30 over log 5. And those are base 10. So um, you could put it, all this could be done in your calculator now. I usually wait because I end up rounding too soon and I don't want to do that. So just leave it as that. Um, so this is all a number. That's just some number, and you can get it in your calculator if you want to. And whatever that number is, the next thing you're going to do is, of course, subtract 3 from both sides, right? And then you're going to divide by 2, divide by 2, and then x will be isolated. So I like to do it all in one step on my calculator. I'm not going um, to write down a rounded version or anything until I'm done. So I would just rewrite this here. And you can do it on your calculator if you want to. I just don't want to write down all the decimals. I'm just going to rewrite it like this. Now I'm going to subtract 3, because that gets rid of this 3. And then when, after I'm done all that, I'm going to divide by 2. So once you put all of that in your calculator, you divide the whole thing by 2, we should get an approximate answer. It doesn't tell us how many decimal places, but we're going to put 4 down, an approximate answer of negative 0.4434. Okay, that uh, you might need to do the steps a little more slowly to, to get the same answer, but again, you can check. You can take that answer and you can sub it into x in the original question 
see if you get left side equals right side. And before we move on, I want to point out that this right here is not equal to, that is not equal to log base 10 of 30 over 5, which would be 6. That is not the same thing. So review your laws of logs. Log of 30 is its own number. Divide by log of 5, which is its own number. It is not the same as log of 6. So please don't make that mistake. Now let's take a look at part B. Part B says um, we don't have, well, the bases aren't the same. I'm not going to be able to do it easily like that. I'm going to take, again, log base 10 of both sides. I'm not going to write the 10, but I'm just going to rewrite the question as log. You have to, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. There's the golden rule of algebra. So I took log base 10 of one side. I had to take log base 10 of the other side. And put some brackets around that just to clarify that those pieces go together. Okay, I'm going to have to isolate x, right? In order to solve anything, I have to isolate x. So I'm going to take those exponents and bring them down. So x minus 1 times log of 3. Now log of 3 is just a number, so that's great. That's just a number. So right here, let's say log, it's not, but let's say log of 3 is 22. That means what I've got is... 22x minus 22 when I distribute. So it's just um, it's just a number, log base 3. I have no variable there, so that's perfect. Now I go to the other side. I bring down the x plus 2. And I'm going to multiply that by log 4. And again, log 4, just a number. So I'm just going to be distributing. I can distribute, I can start distributing right here. Actually, I will distribute here. But I'm not going to ch I'm not going to get my calculator going yet because it's much easier for me to write log log three times x than it is to write get all the decimals right. So I'm just I am going to distribute. So I'm kind of working backwards here, but I'll write it out with the word log three x times log three minus one times log three equals Again, we have x times log 4 plus 2 times log 4. You can, instead of writing log 3 and log 4, you can keep putting the decimals down. But because of rounding errors, if you're going to do that, you're going to need like four decimal places. Okay? You have to keep writing them out so that you don't start rounding too soon. And it makes your page look really messy. You've just got lines and lines of decimal. I find what I've written here is a lot neater looking than a whole bunch of decimals. So what do I do now? Now I'm going to collect like terms. So this is just, right? imagine this is just like I said before, 22. That would just be a 22x. And this over here would be, say, 27x. Oops, not that one, this one. 27x. So I'm going to collect like terms. I'm going to put the x's together. Let's erase this because those are just made up numbers. And if you're using decimals, that's fine. You can use decimals. Let me put it underneath here. I'm going to subtract x log 4 from both sides. I'm going to subtract x log 4 from both sides. So that brings this one over here. Now I'm going to do also, at the same time, I'm going to add log 3 to both sides. That gets rid of these two. Add log 3. To the, and th these are just numbers. These two right here are just entirely numbers. There's no x's in them. You could be using numbers here, remember, if you wanted to. So what I've got is x times log 3 minus x times log 4. And that equals... So these are gone. 2 times log 4 plus log 3 times log 4. At any point, again, at any point you can get your calculator and start writing out decimals. The next step you're going to have here, though, you're going. this number is x with a number with a bunch of decimals. This is another x with a number, uh, number with a bunch of decimals. So I'm going to factor out the x. I'm just, it's like I'm collecting like terms. So you could already be collecting your like terms, but I'm just going to keep this a little tidier for a minute here. Factor out the x. 
and I get log 3 minus log 4 equals this whole thing again, 2 log 4 plus log 3. Now I want to, I'm trying to isolate x, so I'm going to divide both sides. And here's where I'm going to get my calculator now, minus log 4. I'm dividing by this binomial so that these will be gone and I will have x isolated. So here is where you you can, if you haven't yet, you can get out your calculator and start doing, punching a bunch of numbers in here. So you do a whole bunch of numbers and what you should get for your answer is x equals approximately negative 13.4. Five nine six. That's what you should get there. And if you use decimals right up here at the beginning, right up here instead of distributing, if you use, start using decimals right away, your rounding might be a little might be off. But if you write down four decimal places, then by the time you round to the nearest tenth, which is usually the answer, so this would be thirteen point five negative thirteen point five, you should probably get the same answer. So you can calculate with the word logs or, or or you can work this out with decimals you should still get the same answer just watch for your rounding as i said before um, the question says try different strategies so i'm going to show you another way to do b to do that i'm going to work over here in this section right here so i'm going to erase all of this so i'm going to press pause and erase it and if you haven't copied yours down yet you can do that now Okay, let's do B a different way. So we're not, we're not doing A here, we're doing B. This time I'm going to use the strategy that I used up here in this example. So I'm gonna take, I'll write it out, three to the power of X minus one equals four to the power of X plus two. So I'm going to try um, breaking it apart. If you remember how to do that, in this case, I would be doing, th 3 to the power of x minus 1, the step above that, if I were working in reverse, would be 3 to the power of x. And then there's a couple of ways you could write it here. You could put divided by 3 to the power of 1, because that would give you x minus 1 when you subtract the exponent. You could also do um, multiplied by 3 to the power of negative 1. That would give you the same answer there. You could put multiplied by 1 over 3. If you wanted to, um, probably the easiest way to do this is writing it as 3 to the power of negative 1. That's equal to 4. So I'm going to break this one up as well because I'm trying to isolate x and my x exponents right now are uh, connected with constants. So this is 4 to the power of x times, times 4 to the power of 2. That would have been the step before that step if I was working in reverse. Okay, so I've got some, some numbers here now. I've got 3 to the power of x times, so 3 to the power of negative 1, I already did this kind of, this is 1 third. And over here we've got 4 to the power of x times 4 to the power of 2 is 16. So the next step I'm going to Bring, let's start, we'll just bring our constants together first. I'll do one step at a time here. I'm going to divide both sides by one third, divide both sides by one third. So one third divided by one third, they're gone. 16 divided by one third, 16 divided by one third is 16 times 3 over 1. We get 3 to the power of x equals 4 to the power of x times 48. Now I'm going to bring the 4 to the power of x over. So I have to divide both sides by 4 to the power of x, divide both sides by 4 to the power of x. So this is interesting here. Okay, these 4 to the power of x are gone. On the right side, all I have left is a 48. But on the left side, I have 3 to the power of x over 4 to the power of x. I'm trying to isolate x. That's what we're always trying to do when we're solving, isolating x. But I've got two x's here but I can write them together as one because this is three over four to a single power. That's the same, these are, the, these are equivalent. These are the same thing. Three to the power of x over four to the power of x is the same as three over four all to the power of x. 
So now look at what you have here. What we have here is a much more straightforward question to work with. And again, there's a couple of ways to solve this, but we're going to use logs to solve it. I'm going to convert. I'm going to convert this to log form. Remember how we do that? Convert it to log form. Right now it's an exponential form, so I want to convert it to log form. Erase this stuff up here. Convert it to log form. I'm going to go back up to the top. Convert it to log form. What does that look like? Okay, let's start with the word log. What number out of all that stuff is the base? Well, the base for this one is three fourths. That's the three fourths. What number goes here? What number goes in for the uh, input is what we kind of call that. That's going to be the 48. And that's all equal to my exponent. The whole point of logs is so that I got that exponent. I'm now working with that exponent. It's isolated. So remember on the last slide when I showed you the change of base formula, but I used a base of 10 anyway, so it didn't really help. Now we're going to use that change of base formula. I should have put it on this slide instead. The change of base formula says, let me rewrite it for you. I'll put it up here. This is a change of base formula. Log b of a, that's what we have below. The b is the 3 over 4, the a is the 48. That's equal to writing log of a to a base 10 over log of b. So we're just going to sub into that formula. We use a change of base formula and that puts everything in base 10. That's x is equal to log of 48. Sorry, let me put the x later. I don't want to throw you off. Let's put the x on the right side. So you've got log something over log something. And the common mistake is put the wrong thing in the top. Just remember the base goes on the bottom. The base goes on the bottom. So that's a 3 over 4 down there. 48 up here and those are base tens so you can now get out your calculator and do this and you should get the same answer we got before two different ways of doing the same question um, I like the one on the left more it, it's a lot uh, it's a lot more sophisticated it's it's just got um, a lot of less decimals and collecting like terms and all that it's just a lot cleaner but both work of course so there's always more than one way to often more than one way to do questions so here are two of the most commonly used practical applications of logs um well we're doing two earthquake questions here logs are really common for this so we've got some new um, variables. This, when you see a little zero subscript, it's often said as not. So this would be I not. Let I not or I zero. Now I not represent the intensity of any earthquake with a magnitude of m not. So unfortunately, this is what throws everybody off: magnitude and intensity. They're actually two different things, but the words sound really similar. If I told you. An earthquake had an intensity of something or a magnitude of something. It'd be hard to distinguish th th those are different, but they are. So we've got I naught for intensity, M naught for magnitude. Then the intensity, just plain old I. So the, not, the I naught is like original. Think of it as meaning that. So we've got the original intensity. Then we've got the intensity of another earthquake, and its magnitude is just M. So the the plane I is kind of the second, the one that we're comparing it, comparing to, and this is the original one with the M naught. This is our formula here. I will give you this formula on the test. You don't have to memorize it. So here's our formula for in intensity and magnitudes of earthquake. In 1999, an earthquake in Turkey had a magnitude of 7.5 on the Richter scale. 7.5 so look over here here's the Richter scale 1 2 3 4 5 6 so between 7 and 8 is a major earthquake anything higher than 7 but they get really big really fast right the difference between a magnitude of 7 earthquake and a magnitude of 8 earthquake is huge that's a big scale 
and then an eight or great eight or larger magnitude is called a great one. In 1960, an earthquake in Chile had a magnitude of 9.5. That's devastating. How many times as intense as the earthquake? How many times as intense as the earthquake was the Chile earth, Chilean earthquake? So this is where we have to figure out which one's the original and which one are we comparing because that's how you decide what goes in for the I and what goes in for the I not. What goes in for the M? And what goes in for the M naught? We don't know the intensity. We don't have any I numbers. We only have magnitude numbers here. So we only have M numbers. So one of these is going to be M naught, and one of these is going to be M. So the M naught is is the one that we're kind of comparing to the other one. So we're going to start with the equation I equals, and then we'll figure out what we're going to sub in, i equals i naught times 10 m minus m minus m naught. That's the exponent. So what goes in for m minus m naught? So we're, we're trying to compare. I, we don't have values for intensity, so those stay and of course 10 is 10. The magnitude, the magnitude that we're looking at is 9.5 and we're going to subtract from that 7.5 because we're comparing it to the, the the turkey one. Okay, So it's not necessarily which one was first and which one was second, it's more just how are we comparing them and it's it's usually the larger number minus the smaller number. So that gives us i equals I naught times 10 to the power of 2. Not 10 to the power of 2 is 100. I naught times 100. And we don't have values for I or for I naught, but that's okay. We don't, it's not asking us um, what was the intensity. It's saying how many times as intense. So I don't need to know those other numbers. I know that it's 100 times as intense. So Chile's earthquake, Chile's earthquake was 100 times as intense. Even though one was 9.5 and the other was 7.5, that's 100 times as intense. That's not double, that's not two times as intense, or triple, three times. It's 100 times as intense. So that is where we get this exponential scale here, this great increase is because um, our numbers show us that 100 times as intense is the difference between a 7 and an 8. Sorry, between a 7.5 and a 9.5 is 100 times as intense. So let me finish my sentence here. B, and by the way, earthquakes, if you, right now, if you did a Google search for have there been any earthquakes today or this week, guaranteed there have been earthquakes and I often find right around the time of when we're learning the Richter scale all of a sudden students start noticing or they're hearing in the news or they're seeing it on social media hey there was an earthquake earthquakes are not uncommon so um, now you can make sense of these numbers you're hearing if you're hearing an uh, earthquake had a magnitude of 7.5 on the Richter scale you know that's pretty big like w these ones are so flat our curve is so flat here you're really they're really small really not even felt but the, bi the bigger the number, really, it escalates really quickly. Calculate the magnitudes. This one was about calculating intensity. Calculate the magnitude of an earthquake that is twice as intense as the 2000 Papua New Guinea earthquake, which measured 8.0 on the Richter scale. And that's another big one, 8.0 on the Richter scale. So here's another visual of it. Here's magnitude. Here's the scale of magnitude. And here's here's eight, where we are at eight, and it's telling you on the other side what that's equivalent to. So this is Mount St. Helens eruption. That was a volcanic eruption in the United States in the 80s, I think. So that's that that was the energy equivalent of that earthquake. Okay, let's go. Let's start off with our formula. Oops. Let's start off with the formula. I equals I naught times 10 to the power of M minus M naught. 
Now, what do we know? Well, we've got one that's twice as intense as the other. So the magnitude of the earthquake that is twice as intense, that's obviously the stronger one because it's twice as intense. So the intensity of the stronger one is going to equal to twice the intensity of the smaller one. Those, so I'm just going to substitute that in here. I'm going to put um, two. So if I'm taking this little equation here, intensity equals two times intensity naught. So I'm going to replace the i on my left side here with two i naught. Those are the same. Equals i naught times 10. Now, do we have any m values we can sub in? Do we have any m values? Yeah, we have the 8. Now, is 8 an m or an m naught? It's an m naught because it is, we're looking for the one that is twice as intense. And I know those are confusing to figure out. How do you know? You just have to read the question a few times to yourself, I think, rather than me just rereading it over and over again. So i naught is our variable here. So now in my equation, I can divide both sides by i naught and get rid of them because I have too many variables going on here. I'm going to divide these out here. And I'm left with 2 equals 10 to the power of m minus, oops, m minus 8. Ah. There we go. If you remember, I said usually the bigger number is going to come first when you're subtracting. Almost always the bigger number is going to come first. So if we've got an earthquake that measures 8.0, but we're looking for one that's twice as intense, then that's going to be your, your bigger number. So that's, going to, that's one way for you to figure out which one goes where. Okay, what do we do now? We have a pretty straightforward equation. We're going to take log base 10 of both sides because I can't write them both with a base of 2, so I'm going to have to use logs. Log base 10 of both sides. Log base 10 of both sides. That gives me log base 10 of 2 equals log base 10 of, uh, of the, with the exponent of minus 8. Now, of course, that fantastic we have a couple of things we could do. We can just bring down this m minus 8, but I'm gonna, there's another thing I could do here. Let's see if anyone knows I'm, where I'm going with this. So I could just bring down, well, let me bring it down. There's the m minus 8. Bring that down, sorry, capital M minus 8 times log 10. But what is, what is this? What is log base 10 of 10? What is that? 10 to the power of what is 10? 1. It's all equal to a 1. So the other thing I could have, well, I could have done here, let me draw a line out from here, with this log, that's an invisible base, 10 of 10, m minus 8. Remember we had some of those very specific um, little rules of logs, and when we have our base the same as the input, we get to just bring this right down to the front. So that's because your answer, these two will give you a one every time, no matter what your two numbers are there, you're going to get a one. So we could have skipped this whole piece here because this is all going to be a one. Let's go back. I've got log base 10 of two equals, now all I'm left with here is m minus eight. So now we're going to isolate for m, no problem. We're going to add eight to both sides. And log base 2, that's just a number. You could go ahead and put it in your calculator. Actually, you may as well go ahead and put it in your calculator. Log base 2 plus 8, what do you get? That's your answer for m. And you should get something like 8.301 is about m. And what does that mean? So I want you to think about that for a second. What does that mean? It's so important in word problems that you understand your answer because you have to, with a word problem, if it starts off with a sentence, you've got to end it with a sentence. So you've got to explain what that M means. 
and a good guess would be it means magnitude because it starts with m but which magnitude which one are we talking about so you've got to be really clear if you're not really clear in your answers then i can't judge whether or not you actually knew what you just found or you were just trying to rephrase a question and hope for marks so you've got to make sure to explain what that means Therefore, an earthquake with twice the intensity of Papua New Guinea's would have a magnitude of approximately 8.3. Not what you were thinking, maybe if you thought about it at the beginning. You've got a magnitude uh, of 8.0, and you want it to be, you're calculating what's twice as intense. You might be thinking, oh, well, 8 times 2, that's going to be 16, obviously. Wrong, because this is not linear. This is not linear growth here. This is exponential growth. So twice as intense of 8 is just 8.3. So if, imagine yourself in an 8.0 magnitude earthquake. That's pretty serious. And someone has a doubled the intensity of that. It only goes up to 8.3. But that's the way the logarithmic scale works. So um, make sure you have a good answer to support the, the uh, knowledge that you show me with your algebra here. And I understand that sometimes these formulas are a little tricky to use. Just read slowly and carefully and then substitute in and you'll get the hang of the way uh, that, that the uh, variables need to be substituted with numbers. Okay, that is your lesson on solving exponential equations and with word problems.